I miss uh, the competitive side of it. I miss being involved in a family, in a team. Um, I've struggled a lot with that. I've struggled in the last two, I mean, it's two years this May since I've stopped playing and I've had issues with anxiety in terms of not playing. Um, I've actually put myself back into counselling to help me overcome that. And if someone turned around to me and said, will you come and sign for us? I think I'd do in a heartbeat if I could. Um, obviously with my children as well, I'd find it really difficult. They've got their football and, and that was part of the reason I sort of gave up mine because I wanted to help them grow and develop in their game too. Um, so yeah, it's been really challenging and I understand why people struggle. And it's not until you speak to people that are in the game that are having the same struggles because people outside of it are not in that intense environment. They're like, well, what are you struggling with? It's just football. And you say, you know what, it's not just football, it was my life. And actually it was a big part of my life. So right now you take that away, it's like a grieving process. You lose a little something of you and it's been really difficult. Did you knew, did you know, sorry, what the other side was like? Did you know that that period was going to be as tough? What, is there any kind of preparation for that or do you just end your career and then start thinking about the next stage and then the struggles begin? Yeah, I think for me, obviously having my children within it, sort of my education side and my new opportunities were put to the side. So for me, obviously playing football, I had my children. Now I'm looking at my next career. So I was fortunate enough that Chelsea put me in the role of the club ambassador, but I'm also now gone back into education where I'm learning and finding a passion for what it is next, where I want to be. Coaching was never something I wanted to do, unfortunately, but I always wanted to stay within the game. But there is struggles. I, I think to myself sometimes, would I have been better to have separated myself from the game completely for a while, to go through that process, that grieving process, or was it good to stay? And I don't think I would have coped either way. So it's, I don't know, really know how you manage that. And I think there's not enough support out there for that side of it, that when you come out of the game, that transition, some people it's easy to do, but I think for me, I found it really, really difficult. Let's just quickly, last one, just about this Chelsea team and what they can achieve. So Intercontinental co inter -continental Cup winners, um, what more is left for Emma Hayes to achieve with this squad? Well, I'm hoping to do the uh, all three trophies this year. I think um, she's built a great squad over many, many years. It's not just been obviously for this year. She's a great person, great coach. Um, and she brings great players into the club. For Emma, it's not just about their ability on the pitch. It's also about the, the person they are and what they're going to bring to the team and building that family. And I think being within Chelsea, I think that's one of the things that I came out with is that it was like a family. Everyone sort of got on. We were all on the same page. And you know what? You can build in your ability. You can make yourself better. But I think she empowers people to be themselves and be confident and be good people. And I think that's more important sometimes than the on-the-pitch stuff.